Right, it is coming to a conclusion. The 2018 Island Queen Buddy Ferreira Classic here at the beautiful Falmouth Ice Arena. Day four of four. Fifth place game in the championship games. We begin with the fifth place game between the Hingham Harbin and the Archbishop Williams Bishops. Jake Levin alongside Rich McClone, Kevin Booth on production today. Rich, welcome back. Hey, Jake, glad to be here. And we got one more day of hockey. Unbelievable that it's already coming to a close. Seems like we just started this thing. You look forward to it all year and then poof, it's gone. And really though, this is just the appetizer for the bigger things come in the MIAA tournament and the super eight and things of that nature. Yeah, we just finished talking about that for about a half an hour on my <laughs> podcast. So, uh, Cape Pod Sportscast, for those of you uh, listening at home, uh, subscribe. You might enjoy it. Definitely uh, talked about these Hingham Harbormen that you're gonna t- uh, we're going to see here. And Jake, I tell you, this Hingham team, they get a solid win today. I think they're sitting pretty as far as that Super 8 uh, go- field goes. There's two tiers of the Super 8, Rich, when you really get down to it. There's the top six, and then there's the final four, in which the final four teams are in the play-in round. The two winners advance to join the top six in the Super 8 itself. The two losers go back down to their regional tournaments. Hingham right now is a lock for that top tier, the top six, and they could really get as high as the four seed. And at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what your seed number is because it's not like you get home ice advantage. You're playing up at the Saugus Center in Lowell in either case. So the game is underway. Hingham heading left to right across your screen. Archie's right to left. Hingham an early attacking end bid. Backhand bid by Will Kenny, and that's over the goal line. Score. Hardman, 29 seconds into the game. Tommy Kornack with a shot. Initial save made by Cam O'Connor and Will Kenny at the doorstep. Hey, it's a garbage goal, but a goal nonetheless. 29 seconds in. Hang him up, 1-0. Well, you know, my favorite kind of goals are ugly goals, and that is right up there. Right? Throw the puck to the net, get it bouncing around, and you know what? Whack at it. Sometimes it goes in. Just like that, the Harbormen get themselves a 1-0 lead. Two shots, one goal. Pretty decent uh, percentage. I was about to say, Hingham's not a team that's going to score a lot of goals, per se. They've scored 56 on the season. Uh, I guess we can kind of throw that out the window when you score less than half a minute into a contest. Well, you know, they want to set the tone here early. They're up against a team that really playing for nothing other than pride. And when the Harbormen... If the Harbormen are able to stake themselves to a comfortable lead early, one, they'll be able to uh, use their bench and uh, get a little rest uh, in for the coming days, and also be able to uh, cruise. And they yes. would like to be able to cruise. They were able to do that on Saturday against Duxbury, in a uh, Monday rather, whenever their last game was here. It all blends together in similar fashion. They actually scored two goals in the first five minutes of regulation, and then all they needed was one more to really make themselves feel comfortable. It was a 3-0 win for the Hybridmen. Their fourth straight win over Duxbury, dating back to the 2016 season, all via shutout, for well, what it's worth. Yeah, well, you know, getting shut out by Hingham is nothing to uh, be too ashamed of because this is a team that just plays so well in the defensive end and in the neutral zone. The offense comes. They do enough offensively to get uh, more wins and losses. But it's in the neutral zone and, you know, between the pipes where the Harbormen really shine. Latest in a long line of great Hingham goaltenders under head coach Tony Messina. It really goes back before Tony, really, when Garrett Regan was the head coach. But it's Kornak today. It was Matt Personini yesterday. It was Derek McInnes before that. It was Nate Egan before that. They have never not been solid between the pipes, have the Harbormen. And, you know, that, if you want to make a run in the state tournament, prerequisite number one, you got to have a goalie. Hingham's 11, 4, and 6. They are 10, 0, oh, and 2 against public schools. Tony Messina was very quick to remind me of that uh, this t- today. We were talking with him a little bit before the game about how he felt about the Super 8 chances and he feels secure in the top six and comparing some resumes of Hingham and Burlington and Arlington and some of the other top publics. And Hingham has beat every public in its way. They've beat most of the Catholic schools as well. Archie's trying to avoid that fate. The Bishops are 5-8-6. and six. They needed five points in three games down here to make the postseason. That came quickly to an end on Saturday night when Falmouth eliminated them. Archie's had a 3-1 lead. Clippers came back with two third-period goals, so really four unanswered. 
in essence, as we have the net off its moorings down by Cam O'Connor. First stop, it's 12.06 to go on the first. Yeah, you know, and the thing with that loss to Falmouth uh, on Saturday, Jake, was we didn't see the level of desperation out of Archbishop Williams that we thought we needed to. They were in a must-win situation. Third period tie game, and the sense of urgency really wasn't there from, uh, from Archie's. You know, and that was a little disappointing. We would have liked to see a little better effort there. Played pretty well the other day. They want to finish strong. Hey, I'll tell you what, find a way to knock off Hingham and you got something that, you get a bill of goods you can sell your uh, juniors and seniors and all your other underclassmen for next year. Well, it's funny you mention that. They don't have any sophomores on the roster. Not a single one. They do have nine freshmen, as well as one eighth grader, Caden Hess, playing a pretty big role for the Bishops. Yeah, and we've liked what we've seen out of that youngster. He plays with a pretty good motor. He's not the biggest guy out there, but you can tell that he's got potential for the future. It's another shot by Will Kenny, turned away by O'Connor. Quilty follows with the half boards. Behind the net, Ryan O'Connor for the Bishops. Up ice to John Vaughn. Vaughn had a goal the other night for Archie's in that loss to Falmouth, helped him get out to that lead. Kenny touches the puck, avoided an icing against the Harbourman, settled by Mark Laney in his own end. Carries the puck out, intercepted clean by Jake Higgins. He had a goal against the Dragons. Higgins in, trying to thread the needle. Looks like it was Marshall Terez cutting in from around the point. The two can't connect. They're going to try to work that chemistry again in the lacrosse season. And there's a shot by the Bishops. That was Brian McSweeney, turned away by Kornak, his first Big test of the game. Yeah, and a nice uh, follow-up bid there. Ryan Brady almost there for the put home, but just unable to control that bouncing puck. Jacob Clark slithered through the attacking end and was denied by O'Connor. Terez, a spin move. Terez bound for Colgate University. Going to play lacrosse there next season. He's a senior, four-year member of the varsity team. Caleb Wooden in his own end. Keeps it away from trouble. Joe Jacobs, near end, sends it up. Ice for Terez on the right wing. Dumps it in, gloved down by Riley Solani. Working in the corner. Looks like John Sullivan got out, muscled to the puck by Brady. Across the ice, through the official's crease. Settled by Wooden, backhanded along to Jacobs. Could not connect on the near wing with Ben Minkin, and that'll be a rare icing against the Harborman five minutes into the first period. Uh, so far, pretty much everything you would expect. Hang them up 4-2 on the shot board. The uh, Harbourman just doing a nice job getting the puck to the net. We get that early ugly goal. And defensively, just setting up in that neutral zone and having tough layers to get through, which is what we usually see out of the Harbourman. James O'Toole, the freshman out of Rockland, take the, takes the draw for the Bishops. Couldn't win it. Hang him behind the net. Gets the puck out of their own end. Grab by the Bishops in the neutral zone. That was Packard, turned the puck over to Raul. High in his own end, Packard slid it across towards Minkin. Hingham trying to outlet, and all of a sudden the Harbourman having a little trouble getting out of their own end. As the Bishops take a line change, can Hingham capitalize? That's off the bottom of the stick of Tim Carroll. What I notice that the Archbishop Williams team likes to do, Jake, is they like to send a lot of bodies toward the puck. That can result in the uh, turnovers and get some pressure going. But it, <laughs> excuse me, it also opens up a lot of uh, space on the ice and uh, counter teams that like to counterattack can really expose that. Hingham has the ability to counterattack that way. They just don't typically like to play that style of hockey. Shot from the point off the stick of Liam Barnacle was blocked well before it could reach the goal mouth. Pat Finley, the puck on his stick. Finley, the son of Hingham High girls hockey coach Tom Finley, and he's not quite in sync with Paul Forbes, the freshman. A step over the blue line, and that'll be a draw in the neutral zone. That, that might have been the result, too. There was a little back check there where Finley got hooked a little bit, and I was looking to see, are we going to see the arm go up? Referees decided to let it go. I wonder if they flew over from uh, Pyeongchang from the... Uh, Cut after calling that uh, U.S. Canada game last night, letting some things go that shouldn't have gone. I gotta be honest, I uh, fell asleep long before I got uh, long before the conclusion of that game uh, last dude, night. You missed a classic. Oh, a swag for me. <laughs> Mark Igo, the CEO of my hockey lab, on campus here. Just dropped off uh, some goodies that will be going to members of the All Tournament team, which will be announced at the conclusion of the championship game tonight between BC High and Reading. We already have a 
I suppose a rough draft of the team as uh, assembled, but there's still spots to be earned, maybe for one of these teams. Hey, you never know. You go out and uh, get yourself a Hattie or make 40 saves. Spots to be had. Loose puck, and there was a big pile up just shy of the hanging bench. We did not write the we did not write our rough draft in Sharpie. No, no, sir. Near wing, Terrence Con Cannon. Back check by Nicholas Recupero. Across the ice, Connor Kelly looking to go upwards towards Caden Hess. He's that eighth grader we told you about. Kornak slaps it off the end wall. Jake Higgins trying to keep the puck out of harm's way to Frankie Higgins, his older brother. Frankie a senior, Jake a junior. Some stick handling. Here's Con Cannon. Dumps it into the corner boards. Frankie Higgins will give chase. Rest of his line off for a change. Settled. The own end by Hess. Hess gets bullied off the play by Higgins. Quilty to the point for Jake Higgins. Jake Higgins, the wrist, through traffic, and Kenny couldn't get the deflection for the Harborman. Yeah, that's scary for Archbishop Williams. They're all started because they turned the puck over deep in their own end. That allowed Archbishop Williams to feed the point. I mean, hang him to feed the point, get a shot on goal. Craig Higgins in front score! Backhand bid. Jeep Quilty gives Hingham a 2-0 lead. Pretty simple shot, simple pass, simple goal. And that's the second time today that they've scored low to the glove side. First one was a bouncing puck. That one just a nice little uh, drag over to the far side. But that turnover we were talking about, that's the same possession right there. Hingham was able to work the puck in their own end because Archbishop Williams had an opportunity to clear the zone, turned it over. Can't do that against a good team. Quilty the goal scorer at 7.53. Frankie Higgins will have the primary assist. We'll see if there's a secondary, and that line is out there looking for more. Near point, Joe Jacobs, moving to the middle. Takes a risk to score! Joe Jacobs. I think we're gonna see a goaltending change. I think uh, Coach Derek Curtis thinks his team needs a, some kind of a spark right now. And yeah, we are gonna see a change in the goal as... Uh, Bobby Sider's going in, yeah. the freshman out of Hanson, Massachusetts. That was Joe Jacobs on the goal, 17 seconds after Quilty, 3-0 Harborman. And that was just a, a lazy wrist shot from high in the slot. That was Go another one from Jacobs, testing Sider's early. He deflects it up and out of play, 6.42 left in I the I wouldn't first. call that shot lazy. That shot had some steam on it. And it's like, hey, hey freshman, welcome to the hockey game. Bobby Siders, freshman, as we said, one of nine on this Archbishop Williams middle, roster. Middle name Turner. He's a goalie, you know, Turner Siders. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, 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 I yeah. got gotcha. you. That's underneath the stick of wood. Room to run for John Barry up the far wing. And look at Kornak way out of his crease in the circle. And Tepper is flared. Yeah. Barry getting the brunt of it. And, and you know, Rich, this reminds me is wooden. Reminds me of the Milan Lucic Ryan Miller play that must have been six or seven years ago at this point. I mean, what's the player supposed to, what's the skater supposed to do if the goalie comes out and plays the puck like uh, that? You know what, though? You can let up. He could have let up. He didn't have to run the goalie. He had enough time to get around him there. He's looking to give his team a spark. He's ticked off because his team was down three to nothing. So he takes a run at the goalie. He's trying to bring a spark. Because I can almost tell you for sure, on the Archbishop William bench right now, the assistant coaches over there are saying, would you guys show some life? Go out there and hit somebody. Yeah, you know? I guess he took it a little too literally. He took literally. it a little too literal, and he goes out there, and, it, and the goalie gets run. But Archbishop Williams is looking for a spark. They're looking for some kind of signs of life. They're down 3 nothing, and we still have 36 minutes of hockey to play. We also have two members of the Bishops in the box, only one for Hingham, John Barry in there. He ran Kornak. Caleb Wooden is in the box. It also looks like Ryan Brady got busted. I am waiting to see how they announce the penalty time, how they div divvy it all up, whether it will be a five-on-four advantage for the Hardman, a four-on-three. It looks like it's going to be... Well, I only see three Archie skaters, and I see five Hingham skaters. Which is strange because there is someone in the box. Unless someone got kicked out of the game. It's a two-minute penalty for John Barry which would insinuate it's going to be five minutes for Wooden and Barry. And we're hearing some calls for five on four, and that would make sense, certainly. Yeah, yeah and here comes another skater for Archbishop Williams now. 
John Vaughn joins the prey. Not the first time we've had confusion in this week, no. this week over a five on three or five on four. No, it looks like they got it right this time. So I would assume that Wooden and Barry are going to be done. They're announcing it now. Four minute double minor for roughing. So it's a hanging power play. It's Marshall Terez, a wrister that doesn't quite reach and the goal. The clock is not moving either game or penalty right now. Yeah, this is weird. Uh, now it moves, so hang him. That's about 10 seconds of free time. <laughs> Here's Jacob Clark up the left wing. Clark through the corner, carrying the puck over to the near side. Blaney throws a stick. Can't get an intercept. Out to the far point for Terez. Terez moving back to the near side of the blue line. Slides across for Jake Higgins. A wrister wide of the goal mouth. Terez will keep it alive for the hard minute. Pops up on him, so he's going to have to regroup in the neutral zone now with Vaughn for checking him. Uh, he took his eye off the puck for just a second and it slid under his stick. Now the uh, Harbormen looking to reset their power play. About 80 seconds to go on the man advantage. Jake Higgins near point. Firm pass across the blue line to Terez. Perez Arister almost got the deflection from Clark, and it's just too wide. Quilty behind the net. Frankie Higgins in the far corner. Sends it out for Terez up top. Perez gives back over for Higgins. Higgins up top for his brother, Jake Higgins. A slap shot gets the deflection and score. Marshall Terez may have gotten a piece of it. We'll have to take a look, but it's a 4-0 lead for Harvin. That's a power play tally at 9.27 of the first. Jake Higgins lets it go from high in the zone. They've had some success with the shots from up there. That's the second in a row that resulted in a goal. I don't know if you noticed it, but after, after the puck went in the net, Higgins looked over at the uh, Hingham bench and gave a nice little point. I don't know who he was talking to, but obviously there was some kind of point that they had made earlier today where he said, see, I listen. If it is Higgins' goal and not Terez, it's Higgins' second goal of the tournament. It's Kornak jumps the route, the defenseman behind the net. John Sullivan trades with the Kornak a wraparound and Siders is able to fall on top. Prevent this from being a 5-0 game. Well, you and I had talked before the game, you know, and we were saying we had a feeling that this game was going to be all hang and it kind of had the feeling of, oh, it'll probably be 4 or 5 nothing. We didn't realize that might be the first period. Hang him, I don't know if I would even call it making a statement, just reminding people that they are the best public school team in the state right now, and they are going to be a top six seed in the Super 8. Uh, no doubt about it, the Harvardmen, they came to the Cape with a uh, mission. Unfortunate for them that they had to play BC High in game one, because that would have been a tremendous championship game, which next year might be our championship game. You never know, because they're talking about uh, shuffling the way we do the seeding here in the game matchups for the uh, Classic next year. Which is going to be very exciting. Going to go off our good friend Jim Clark's RPI that he uses for the Boston Herald. And uh, yeah, Hingham would have been two. BC High would have been one. We would have had Austin Pratt three. And I believe Falmouth would have been the four seed. I think Falmouth would have been the four. Uh, Reading five. That sounds about right. And then uh, Duxbury might have been the six. And Arlington, uh, Archie and then Arlington Catholic and some, you know, Something like that. But it, yeah, but this game would have more likely been a first round game. This would have been 2 7. This is the sixth season in a row that Hingham and Archies have met in the Buddy Ferreira Classic. Hingham has won the previous three, including last year's meeting that eliminated Archies from postseason contention. That was the third place game of the tournament. Teams skated to a tie back in the 2014 tournament. Hingham went on to win that in overtime. So Archie's last win against the Hardman, you have to go back to 2013. None of these kids are even in high school yet. <laughs> no. A lot of them were still in elementary school. Were you still in high school then, Jake? Nah, nah, don't want to date myself too much. Should have graduated college that year, but that's another story for another time. Uh, you know what I say, people who graduate college in four years, you're not impressing anyone overachiever. That's what I'm saying. Here comes John Vaughn up the near wing for the Bishops. Vaughn Arister turned away by Kornak. And I will say that I definitely enjoyed my three college tour. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you get a, you know, when you try on shoes, do you always go with the first uh, pair you try on? Almost never. Exactly. Bridgewater State was just a uh, 
pair of Nikes that just didn't look right. I didn't like the spring. Neutral zone, now back John Riley in his own end, sends it across to Blaney, back to Riley, trying not to fall victim to the relentless hang and forecheck that does not quit, despite being up four goals, less than 12 minutes into regulation. Now Hingham's gonna play Hingham hockey, at least for, oh, and that's a nice hit in the corner there. That was Alex Adams, the senior, generally a third or fourth line player for the Harbourman, but at this uh, juncture, you see a lot of guys who don't normally find the score sheet getting out there for the Harbourman. We'll have to wait and see if we have any milestones for them in terms of first career goals, first points, things like that. This is the kind of game where that can happen. And you know what's cool about that too is even though, you know, right now we're in a lopsided game, but these kids who maybe don't get a lot of playing time and they're your fourth liners, your reserves, they get out there. If they're able to do something, you know, say in the Super 8, Somebody, you know, takes a bad hit and has a miss a couple of shifts. Now Coach uh, Messina says, hey, you know what? He had a good, you know, last time I saw him on the ice, he looked pretty good. You, you know, know not, not that he was playing not on the fourth line as a freshman, but do you think that Tony Messina expected Marshall Terrace to score the game-winning goal with a minute left in the state championship game that year? 2015? And go. again, he wasn't a fourth liner. He was seeing regular minutes, but that's why you got to be ready at all times. You never know when your opportunity is going to knock. Flying up the far wing, Frankie Higgins. Will Kenny is hot in pursuit. And Quilty is going to bounce the puck towards the corner boards. Drop for Frankie Higgins. Bounces around on the sidewall. It's going to be cleared out by the Bishops. This should be a no-brainer icing. Two and a half to go on the first. So you didn't get to see the U.S. and Canada, huh? Nah, I stayed up for Bruins Oilers. Uh, Oh, that would have been Tuesday night. Yeah, yeah. Stayed up for the end of that one. I was I was writing uh, hockey and basketball stories last night about midnight, and I noticed on Twitter somebody made a mention of the game. I was thinking to myself, but wait, that game's supposed to be on Thursday, not realizing that in South Korea it is Thursday. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, shoot, I have to watch that because – that is one of the best rivalries going. A chance for the Bishops, who's carried a bit too far by Brady, I believe, on the far side. So, long story short, I ended up staying up until 2.30 in the morning watching women's hockey and loved every single second of it. And after the U.S. won the uh, gold medal uh, sometime around 2 in the morning, had a nice uh, exchange on Twitter with the one of the members of the first ever U.S. women's gold medal teams. Uh, Colleen Coyne. Ah, of course, Colleen uh, Coyne, Falmouth native. Falmouth native, a uh, member of the 1998 women's team that won gold in Japan. Nagano, if I'm Nagano, not mistaken. Yeah, very good. I couldn't recall. I just knew it was Japan. Uh, and, you know, we exchanged a couple of jokes, and she was very pumped up and very proud to see the U.S. women take down the evil Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we love Canada. Terrace for Carroll and a nice blocker save by Siders. Oh, that was a fantastic save by Siders. Don't know if he saw it all the way, Jake, but he threw out that uh, waffle pad and uh, pancaked it away. Here comes Joe Sullivan. Sullivan, a backhander. Another save by Siders. Joe Sullivan, Ooh. sophomore for Hingham. He scored the Hingham's first goal against BC High on Saturday. At the time, tied the game at 1-1. Getting buried is Carroll along the blue line. That's Blaney. Lower in the shoulder. Joe Sullivan near wing dumps it in. Siders out of the net to tend the puck. Nearly shot it back out in front. Not the first time we've seen Blaney uh, throw his body around in this tournament. You know, good to see that he's still playing hard, uh, even with his team down here in the last game of the season. Joe Sullivan, saucer pass outlet, trying to connect with Minkin. He'll track it down, a shot and elevating is Siders. Like a fastball that didn't hit its target, he was ready for it. You know, here's the thing about games like We already saw the goalie get run earlier. Archbishop Williams, they're obviously playing with a bit of chip on their shoulder right now, you know, down by four. Hingham needs to be very smart over the next two periods here, Jake. You can't afford to get disqualified or have anything that would have ramifications for the postseason. Right. Because your season does not end today, just your regular season. Ryan Riley up ice for the Harbourman. Excellent swipe away by John Vaughn. The last second. Near side, Matt Shea for the Bishops. Gets suplexed by Jake Higgins. 
and Paul Forbes simultaneously, and we hear from numerous officials up in the stands. The uh, first period comes to an end, and pretty much all harbormen through 15. I think the Archies fans there wanted some kind of an interference or maybe a cross check, but I'll tell you what, that looked like a pretty clean hit there by uh, Jake Higgins. Just doing what he's supposed to do. The guy had the puck, he took him off it. I had no issue with it. No, it's okay by me. Well, all right, we're going to take this time to thank some of our sponsors here on MyHockeyLab.com that have been with us throughout the entirety of the Buddy Ferreira Classic, the 2018 Island Queen Buddy Ferreira Classic. This is game 11 out of 12. This is the fifth place game between Hingham and Archies. And coming up at 7 o'clock, you're going to see the championship game between Redding and BC High. BC High going for its third straight Buddy Ferreira Classic title. Meanwhile, Redding going for their first ever Buddy Ferreira title and only their third year competing down here. So we'll start off with the DCR. The Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation is actively recruiting lifeguards to fill summer lifeguard jobs. If you are a qualified swimmer and are interested in applying for a summer lifeguard position, this is a great opportunity to do what you love and make $1,200 every two weeks while doing it. Visit Mass Lifeguard MassLifeGuard.com to register today. And by full spectrum benefits. If you run a business, big or small, now's the time to engage the team at full spectrum benefits. There's no more time for business as usual. Medical premiums are skyrocketing and employees get confused in the alphabet soup of healthcare. These guys get it. With over three decades of experience, the full spectrum team will help you deploy an employee benefit strategy that allows you to focus on managing and growing your business. You spend a lot of money on benefits, they should not be a burden. For a free consultation, call Bill Higgins at 617-872-9944 or visit their website at www.fullspectrumbenefits.com. And by Sullivan Tire. If you're looking for exceptional auto service, head on down to Sullivan Tire. Family owned and operated, they've been serving New England for over 60 years. Their highly trained staff will give you a hand with any of your auto needs. Sullivan Tire offers brand name tires and parts at a price that can't be beat. They're always here to get you there. And by Highview Custom Builders. Founded in 1990, Highview Custom Builders has overseen countless home renovations across the South Shore, Metro West, and beyond. From a simple fix up to a full scale rebuild, Highview Custom Builders is the area leader in designing your dream home and making it the very best it can be. To learn more, contact Steve at Highview Custom at Hotmail. Dot com. First 15 minutes, just about all hanging. It's 4 nothing. four goals from four different goal scorers. When we come back, second period action between the Hartman and the Bishops on My Hockey Live. Welcome back to the start of the second period here between the Hingham Harbin and the Fa uh, Archbishop Williams Bishops here at the Falmouth Ice Arena. 4-0 lead for the Hardman through 15 minutes. And Rich, they dominated in pretty much every facet of the game. Hingham did. I would say so. The Harbormen started quickly, scored 31 seconds into the game, and did not let up. We're already on a backup goaltender. And if uh, Mr. Siders doesn't uh, do too well, I think you've got to go put on the pads. Quilty. Oh, Lord. Quilty. Joe Jacobs, Jake Higgins, Will Kenny, the goal scorers for the Harbormen. Pretty impressive showing by them, and they are not looking past Archie's en route to what, as I said, should be a top six seed in the Super League. No, I mean, it's, you know, get through the next two periods, hopefully you stay healthy, and then uh, we see what the committee has to say on Saturday. And then on what kind of projections you read, well, it really doesn't matter. Hingham's in, and no matter which projection you read, it comes down to are they four, five, or six, or will there be some sort of crime in which they have to fall to a play-in game? And I don't mean they, I have no bias in saying that. I just simply think Hingham's record against the Super 8 watch list speaks for itself. It is only three, four, and four, but you look at some of its competitors, say, a Burlington, who's also worthy of the top six spot, might I add, or say Arlington or St. John's and Shrewsbury, just the sheer volume of games Hingham has. Almost three times as many games as some of those teams. More wins, more points, etc. Well, by my math, which math is hard, but I'm going to try here. Three, four, and four is 11 games. 
they play a 22-game season. Correct. That would mean ah, half of their games are against the best teams in the state. That's uh, that is an aggressive job of scheduling, and uh, you and I have already said it on the podcast earlier today. You know, Tony Messina will play anyone, anywhere, anytime, anyhow. You just say when and uh, let us know. You know where to get a bite to eat after the game. And that list doesn't even include some outstanding public programs that might be down just a tick this year, like say a Framingham or a Braintree or a Franklin. Still great Division One programs that are. Very capable of winning the Division I tournament. Archbishop Williams in its attacking end. Matt Shea in the corner. Being held along the wall by Caleb Wooden. John Sullivan joins the fray. Some bodies banging around. That was Solani getting in there. Very testy down in the near side corner. It's a stalemate. And finally, John Sullivan emerges. Able to get the puck over to Joe Jacobs. Out in center ice. Intercepted by Alex Umbro. He dumps it back into his attacking end, but Wooden will get there long before a Bishop. Stick handling, trying to find Sullivan back up ice. Good four check by Solani, keep it on side for the Bishops. And that is short lived. And as you see that little scrum down there in the corner, it just kind of shows you that I don't think the referees are really in any mood to be using their whistles too much right now. This game being what it is, you know, doesn't mean a whole hunt of a lot for either side. Score is pretty lopsided at this point. Just saw a bit, uh, pretty blatant icing get let go. I don't think we're going to see a ton of whistles as long as the kids play a clean version of hockey going yep. forward. Yeah, you're absolutely right there, Rich. Shouldn't be a lot of stoppages firing obvious uh, calls and to such. Here's Nicholas Glass. Glass in, shot, score! What a great individual effort from Nicholas Glass to give the Bishops a pulse. That was an absolutely gorgeous goal by Glass. That little dangle move, as he comes down the left side, puts it on his forehand and snaps it under the bar. High degree of difficulty, and uh, even the Russian judge liked that one. Glass has had a pretty strong tournament for the Bishops. He scored in their first round game against Falmouth. So don't write Archie's off just yet. Next goal will be very important if there is a next goal, I would say to that. And we have a whistle almost immediately. I, I see, now here's the thing. It's pretty obvious that uh, Robbie Kornack is gonna get a penalty there, but Ryan Brady has gotta be smarter than that. Retaliating is only gonna end up result in matching penalties, and now you're not gonna have a power play. So you've got to keep your cool and don't hurt your team. And I guess he, he didn't. He came up fighting. He's lucky he didn't get a uh, call for roughing there. Now, we don't see a Harborman in the box yet, and that's about to change. Maybe number 10 in your programs, Mike Carroll going to the box. So Archie's to the power play. I think we're going to get Cornette called for, I'm going to guess holding, maybe interference. I, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna put my money on interference. Always interesting when the goalie gets a penalty and you watch the other player have to serve it. What did I do? Five minutes, Rich. They've just changed it. Really? From two to five. Wow. Well, all right. Lifeblood for Archie's in a big way. Five minute power play. That means Jake, it's locked. Jake Higgins with a hit I'm, from behind. And I didn't hear the whistle. I, I didn't hear a whistle either. Neither did but, I, but. Now Jake Higgins is going to go. It's going to be five on three for the Bishops for the next two minutes. And this, after that, they'll still have, if I'm doing my math right, 246, a five on four. That, you know. Hingham did, made a big mistake right here. They just gave Archbishop Williams a reason to still care. You know, they, they're letting the, uh, not only that goal by uh, Glass gave them a little uh, a little heartbeat, and now the five on three penalty. You know, all of a sudden this game just got interesting. Bishops, if they can get even one out of this brand new game, Blaney, 
Across the ice for Brady. Brady for Barry Arister, and it's blocked. Brady trying to get the rebound, and Hengham gets the clear out. That was Jacob Clark. Solani behind his own goal. Bide in time. Frankie Higgins, the high four checker for the Harbormen. Bishops run up ice. They gain the line. Brady slows things down. The far point skates into the circle, trying to dial up Blaney. Out top for Solani. Arister got blocked. Dies along the end boards. Rebound to Barry. Barry in the far circle. Arister. Kornak may have gotten a piece of it. Rebound in the vicinity of Glass, the lone goal scorer for the Bishops. A backhand spinner, and that goes well wide. Solani, near side for Blaney, atop the circle, Arister. Kornak with a glove save, can't hang on. And knocked out by the Harborman. So I just heard the announcement of the penalty. Contact to the head on the goaltender. Interesting. Never, never seen that one before. Jacob Clark killing off some clock for the Harborman. Still 43 seconds going, counting of five on three time. And Archie's going to continue their power play after that. John Vaughn near half board, skates up top. Across the ice, finds Blaney, far circle, back to Vaughn in the slot, shot. Couldn't connect with Brendan Foley, who was at the doorstep. Would have been an easy one time or put away. Uh, Foley just needed to get a blade on that and tip it. That was an easy goal. Ryan O'Connor up top. Rebound to Matt Shea in the corner. Foley. Going back to the near corner, going to have his options. He'll hang on to the puck, give off to Blaney. At top of the zone, Blaney goes into the corner for Shea. Five seconds left of the five on three. Shea curls out, finds Blaney up top of Rister. Blocked in front, Wooden sends it. Out of the penalty box, and here comes Jake Higgins right out of the box. He is stoned on the first attempt by Siders, my goodness. Huge save by the freshman right there. His team still has a chance it's because of that save. And there's still two and a half minutes of five on three time for Archie's. I don't know, I was hearing some fans call for too many men. It was pretty bang bang, what do you think? Uh, as far as I can tell, it was it was kosher. But, you know, Archie's and Williams still has two and a half minutes right. to work with here. If they're able to get one, like you said, they've had a lot of pressure. And that, I tell you, that missed uh, tip in by Foley though. That, that looms large right now. That on top of if Higgins had buried that, that would have been a dagger of epic proportions. Oh, that would have put the game out of reach, but Archie Shuguin still has a pulse, a slight one. Cleared the length of the rink by Joe Jacobs. Siders will tend the puck. Will Kenny in on the forecheck. Nearly took it away from Nicholas Recupero. Ryan O'Connor, you see on his sweater, a soft outlet to John Barry on the near wing. Dumps it into the corner. Looks like he's going off for a change. Some very tired Bishops. Barry stays on. It was a few other players going off. He sends in a risker from the point. Easy save for Kornak. Minute 45 and counting to go on the man advantage for Archie. Frankie Higgins can't get a clear. It was Nicholas Glass throwing his stick in the way. Brady is trying to dial up. That was Barry through the slot. Nothing doing. Glass in the corner. Puck pops over his stick. Packard trying to angle him off to the puck. Poke to the near corner, Solani in from the point. Nobody home at the near point. It's out in no man's land, retreating way back is Alex Umbro. Yeah, he just expected there to be somebody high at the uh, high at the point there to pass the puck to. Sometimes you can't assume things. Packard with another easy clear out, intercepted by Shea. He crosses the blue line. Shea Rister saved Kornak and a premature whistle. With 59 seconds to go. I tell you, Kornak's been really solid. With the exception of the uh, goal he gave up to Glass, which not a lot of guys going to make that save. He has done a good job of being big in his goal, being tall, and keeping the puck from getting behind him. Puck drop. It's fluttering around in no man's land. Kept alive. Far point. Saved by Kornak. A little wrist shot from O'Connor. Now the problem there is the uh, Bishops had no traffic in front of the net. Most of this power play, we have seen John Vaughn trying to uh, block out the sun in front of Robbie Kornak, but unable to uh, get any deflections. The time they really needed him there, he was off on the side. Wooden on the near side, tucks it back towards Frankie Higgins. Keeping it away from the Bishops and knocked along by Terez. 
Bishop's gonna have to tag up. Clark into the attack end, stumbled a bit. Here's Terrence. Terrence in the backhand is saved by Siders. Follows the puck, grabs the rebound. Hang him a little attacking zone time, short-handed. They haven't had much. Two shots on goal now, though. Terrence and, of course, Frankie Higgins earlier. I've been impressed with Siders since he took over. Give up a couple, uh, one goal after, you know, taking over between the pipes, but since. He's made a number of big saves. Wooden from the near point, and it rolls up. Siders stays down and makes the save. 6.32 to go on the second. See, I told you. <laughs> now, Siders has done a nice job. Archbishop Williams, you know, not scoring during a five-minute power play, two minutes of five on three, really, really hurts them here. You know, for the Harbormen, it's a uh, morale boost, you know, being able to kill all that time, they're going to get a lift from that. Something tells me Tony Messina is not going to be pleased with the troops in the locker room, uh, taking two penalties like that, giving up the goal. Quilty with a shot, and it's turned away by Siders. Regardless of what happens in the next six minutes and change, not the finest period for Hingham. And, hey, that'll happen when you get a 4-0 lead. Well, yeah, you say that, but also, you know, how often does your goalie get caught, you know, and get called for uh, contact to the head? You know, Robbie Kornack just saw a guy who took a shot at him earlier, and he was uh, looking for a pound of flesh. You know, he's got to be smarter than that. In the uh, cross check up along the boards, while definitely a penalty, I don't know that he was looking to hurt somebody there. He was just looking to, you know, open some space up, and unfortunately, got his stick right into the player's back and put him into the uh, boards. I see. Sorry, Rich. I see against Tengham. <laughs> That is true. Icing against the Hardman. 5.33 to go in the second. Folks, this is game one of a doubleheader tonight on MyHockeyLive.com. Reading, BC High. I don't see either team in the rink yet. And I guess it's a little early. It's just shy of 6 o'clock here. But they should be filling in soon enough for the 7 o'clock puck drop. Uh, my guess is they're probably here. But they're probably still getting dressed, getting uh, instructions, talking to the coaches. Maybe going to Pixie for a bite to eat. That wouldn't be stunning. Highly recommended, in fact. Yeah, I think I'm going to be stopping between periods. Might be joining Far Point Blaney for the slot for Glass. Glass of Rister picked his spot, and it was about a foot and a half wide of the post. Kenny looking for the clear right in front of the Bishop's bench with Sullivan. Blaney. Back looking for Brady. Brady jousts with Wooden. Wooden trying to poke it, poke it away from Brady. Near corner. That's Carroll. It's going to wind up on the stick of Joe Jacobs. Far end. Jacobs looking to clear it. An outlet pass underneath the stick of John Sullivan. He got a piece of it. Blaney up the middle. Nobody home. And now all of a sudden here comes Shea. Dan Shea in for the Bishops. And saved by Kornak. Oh, big save by Robbie Kornak there. Did not get fooled. He did bite a little bit going to the glove side, but able to stick out his blocker and get that one to the corner. That is huge. If Archbishop Williams is able to cut this to four to two, third period might really be interesting. Joe Sullivan behind his own net, nearly turned it over to Matt Shea, who just had that breakaway. Jacobs looking to keep the puck away from James O'Toole on the boards. Carroll. So back to Jacobs. Jacobs carried it in front of his own net and out of the corner. Hingham having a whale of a time getting it out of their own end. And there's a shot from the point saved by Kornak. Puck's still loose, and Kornak's going to grab it with the glove. 3.49 to go. Hingham on its heels a little bit. Hingham getting a little bit sloppy, and they're lucky they haven't paid for it. Kornak has bailed them out on a couple of occasions here in the third period. You know, 4-1 seems comfortable, but... What do they say about it? the most dangerous lead in hockey is a three-goal lead? Is it three? I thought it was two. I thought it was three. Maybe it is two. No, no lead safe till the final I buzzer. Gonna say, I don't think any lead safe. Frankie Higgins in the near side corner. The attack it in for the Hardman. Frees it to the point for Carroll. I know Carroll. if you're a Toronto Maple Leafs fan, you don't like a three-goal lead. You got that right. Here's John Vaughn, a wrister. Well wide, went underneath the stick of Jake Higgins. Up into the Archie's bench, and Derek Curtis nearly comes up with a catch. Head coach of the Bishops from Canada, I learned recently. Yes, he is. He used to be the head coach at Sandwich High School. 
He was the uh, skipper of the Blue Knights until jumping ship to go to the uh, Bishops. God, that had to have been seven or eight years ago, I would guess at least. Been there ever since. Sandwich now coached by Jordan Moore, if I'm not mistaken. You are correct, sir. Here's Trevor O'Brien over the blue line for the Harbin, poked away by Shea up for glass. And complete the pass to Ryan O'Connor. Carroll up ice, was looking for Terez, touched up, no icing, recupero. Outbody to the puck by O'Brien, loose behind the net. Terez popped it in front, backhand over in the circle. Terez muscled off the play with a stick by O'Connor. Here comes Barry looking to get around Carroll. Barry down on his knees and slid nearly into the boards, well off the puck and no shot for Archie. Here's Marshall Terez gliding up the left wing. Marshall Terez with a backhand in the circle, opted not to shoot, didn't have many passing lanes. That's O'Brien. Fire corner out to Jake. Higgins at the point. Shot deflection. Save by Siders. Still loose, and Higgins is going to get it back. Another shot and another save by Siders. Seen the puck well. He is really, really having a strong game right now. You almost have to wonder if he had gotten the start, would we be uh, in a tie game right now? You always got to wonder. Hagan with some great zone time. The shift now being kept alive by Terrence Concannon. Blaney looking for the clear. Hardman changing up some personnel. Still in the attacking zone, however. Concannon, that's Kornak at the far point, dumping it towards Concannon. Puck. Easily playable for Paul Forbes. Archbishop Williams desperately needs a whistle right now. They're going to ice the puck. Kept alive by Kordak. Shot wide of the post, but it's going to be playable at the near point by Carroll. Lost it, and Archie can get the clear off the near side boards, and that should be an icing with a little more than 90 seconds to go in the second. And they needed that so bad right there. Caught themselves flat-footed in their own zone. They were chasing the puck. Had an opportunity to ice it earlier. Blocked by uh, Hingham and kept it in the zone. But man, I'll tell you what, Bobby Siders had himself a day. He made a save on a deflected puck. It was absolutely grade A earlier, uh, just a second ago. Packer to Rister, and it's off the cage of Siders. Give him a save and a little extra credit. Yeah, I don't think he saw that one until it hit his face. What goalies go through. Quilty throws it in front. Will Kenny for Frankie Higgins. Shot. Saved by Siders. He is having himself a period. He is playing fantastic hockey right now. Alex Umber off the wing. A shot didn't quite reach the goal. Tried to go between the legs with the shot there. Hit a shin instead. Packard along the wall looking for Quilty. Puck moving fast, now into the Bishop's defensive end. Umbro, the first one back there. Kenny kicks it out in front. Couldn't connect with Frankie Higgins in time. Cycling around is O'Toole. O'Toole trying to fool Kenny, and now Higgins. He sends it along the sideboards. McSweeney, first goal scorer of the tournament for the Bishops against Falmouth the other night. Sends it along the edges. I'll be Packard. Kornak, rather, will take it. Tommy Kornak up the boards. Looking for Clark. Clark a little trouble following the puck in the neutral zone. It winds up on Frankie Higgins. Now to Marshall. Terez is shot and it sailed wide on Siders. He didn't have to make a save. Hornack pinches it in at the near point. Terez looking towards the slot. It's out to Packard. Far point. A shot. Leaves a dent in the end boards. Good zone time for the Hardman at the tail end of the second period. Hingham, not their finest work, but they get out. Still with a three goal lead. Nicholas Glass got the Bishops within three. Bobby Siders has been a gift to this game. Two periods down, one to go between Hayden Harmon and the Archbishop Williams Bishops. Jake Levin alongside Rich McClone in a minute, anyways, and Kevin Booth on production. 4 1 lead for the Harbormen. Second period really controlled by Archbishop Williams and uh, I'll wait for Rich to get back on. Uh, a mea culpa to Cam O'Connor, who Rich was back in for the entirety of the second you period. You know, I just, I, just I found that out from uh, one of the down five players was telling me, he's like, no, that's O'Connor. He went back in. Jake Higgins had shot and O'Connor with yet another save. So O'Connor continuing his hot streak since the beginning of the second period. Well, you know what? I don't know what it was that, you know, Things weren't working for him early, but he definitely figured out whatever was ailing him because he's been playing fantastic hockey. 
That he has, and he's only a junior. So he'll have all of next season as well here for the Bishops. A minute gone by in this third period. Kornak a shot for the point. O'Connor with a nice pad save. Kornak gets it back. Arister looking for the deflection. Went off the stick of O'Brien to the far point, Jacobs. That went off O'Brien in the circle. O'Brien to no one in particular. It's Clark. Comes it along to Marshall Terez. Marshall Terez looking out in front. Terez playing the final game of his Buddy Ferreira Classic career. He's played in 12 Buddy Ferreira Classic games. That's a lot. That is, that's, that's a full tournament's worth. O'Brien in the corner. O'Brien, a freshman, playing in his third. Maybe he, too, will someday have 12 games to his name, like Marshall Terez and a couple other players on this hanging team. Hess is going to maybe have 15. That's right. Aiden Elkins, the talented eighth grader on the Austin Prep team, also eligible for 15 games if he stays for four more years at Austin Prep as Archie's ices the puck. It'll be an attacking end draw for Hingham. 13.07 to go in the third. Well, the Bishops really, after the way the game started, they really had no, no business being in this game. They're really still in this game, though. They're only down four to one. Hingham doesn't give up a lot of goals, but the way O'Connor played, he's given him a chance to hang around. If uh, Archies could find a way to get a goal here, this game could get uh, a lot more interesting than we thought it would be. Hingham has given up 30 goals on the season. Five of those came in one night, the other night, really afternoon, against PC High. And four more came against Central Catholic back in December, so... That's really about it. If you want to score on the Harvardman this year, be one of those teams. And 21 goals over its other 20 games. It looked like Hingham got away with a little bit of a trip there in the offensive zone. Carroll taps one off the side of the net. Ben Mink into the point for Carroll. It's blocked. Joe Sullivan got cross-checked down, and that's going to be Mark Blaney going to the box for the Bishops. Hingham going to have a power play. 12-18 left in the third. Uh, Sullivan was the one I thought got away with the trip down in the corner. I wonder if that might have been a little bit of retaliation there. And uh, it's always the second guy who gets caught. Always. Always. In all walks of life. Yeah. Frankie Higgins on to take the draw for the Hardman power play. Wins it back to his brother, Jake. Jake has a goal tonight. He also had a goal against Duxbury the other day. Higgins' consolation round win. Jake Quilty. Near corner, floats it out for Jake Higgins to the point. He lets it fly, deflects all the way to the far corner where Marshall Terez is situated. Leaves it for Frankie Higgins, stapled into the boards by Liam Barnacle. Higgins emerges with the puck and sends it out to the far point, but Jake Higgins wasn't quite in sync. And after a retreat to his own end, carried the puck dangerously close to Robbie Kornak's crease, and now he'll break out of his own end. Sends it up ice for Jacob Clark. Mark over the blue line, drops a backhander for Frankie Higgins, for Jake Higgins. Takes a step up and a shot off the dome of O'Connor. Puck over in the corner, and that is a trip playing his day against Jake Quilty. And uh, Richard, you make a case, that's another example of uh, the second guy getting caught. Well, I didn't see the initial. I know that there's been a lot of battling going on in front of that net. There's a jockeying for position. Quilty, though, came right across the skates, and that's a no-brainer. They're going to call that every single time. Higgins' power play canceled out after 49 seconds. So four on four of four about a <laughs> minute 11, I should say. And then it'll be an abbreviated man advantage for the Bishops. They get the attack and end draw. Brian McSweeney did the honors. Jake Higgins behind the net. Out for Tommy Kornack. Kornack carrying the puck up that far wing. Tommy Kornack inching in. Will Kenny down low. And it's a slash that Quilty went for, not a trip. Jake Higgins for Will Kenny in the corner. Lost his handle through the circle. McSweeney looks for the clear and turns it over to Jake Higgins. A wrister. Little pinball there, but it did not go off of O'Connor's pads the way he so desired. McSweeney, a backhand off ice, looking for Shea and too far in front, and the end result is an ice. That was a beautiful chance there. Went to the backhand, tried to put it right down the slot with a little sauce on it. Just a little too far out front, but nearly sending Archbishop Williams on a breakaway there. I tell you, it's like the Bishops have just been on the edge of, you know, being in this game, just 
right on the edge, not able to get that proximate goal. Shea retreats to the corner with Joe Sullivan in on the forecheck. Ryan O'Connor sends an outlet up, intended for Shea, intercepted by Joe Jacobs. Middle of the ice, right onto the tape of John Sullivan. Slowed him down a bit, denying him a clean entry to the attacking end. Joe Jacobs lost the puck, but John Sullivan winds up with it. All Zelda ends well, goes off the end glass. All the way out to the neutral zone. Clark with Shea bearing down on him. Takes the puck and Clark, ah, Shea rather, went down at his own accord. Yeah, lost an edge the there, went hard into the wall. It's okay. It's now power play for the Bishop for the next 36 seconds and counting. Hangham gets a clear. Emerging Solani. Tape to tape pass to Ryan Brady. Brady went to the middle and over the blue line. Now curls back out towards the wing. Brady to the point for Solani. Uses the boards to get it there. Across the ice for Umbro. Back up top for Solani. Solani a wrister. Trapped in front. It was fluttering around. Brady's going to get it back. Backhanded by Barry. And they can't solve Kornak. Back to Solani. Near point. Solani, a pass to the half wall. Brady was located, tic-tac pass, and unable to hammer it home was O'Connor. He's now stapled up by Jake Higgins. Penalty has expired, and we're back to five on five hockey. That's the second time tonight we've seen uh, Archbishop Williams come so close on that backdoor play, just not able to quite get the connection that they need. Kind of like me when I'm driving out, you know, down in a uh, sandwich. Frankie Higgins hops it off the glass, kept in by glass. Jake Higgins for Jacob Clark. Clark sends the puck along, and he's going to retreat about halfway into his pursuit of the puck in the corner. Archie's, that's Glass, or Connor rather. It was Glass all along, up for John Vaughn. Vaughn in the near circle, moves to the slot, and saved by Kornak. Off his stick, he catches it with the glove. 8.46 left in the game. Yeah, it was a nice little move to get to some space, but in doing so, not a... Uh Another one getting leverage into his shot, put it right on uh, right on Kornak. Pretty easy save for him to make. And oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, walking into the press box, the famous, world famous, Brian Fabry of the Boston Herald. Must be a big game. It's got to be. Of course, he's here for Reading BC High, I believe, which is coming up next on My Hockey Live. About 7 o'clock, buried from behind is Terrence Concannon. I believe that was Brendan O'Brien, the senior defenseman, on the hit. Over in the far corner, a couple bodies go flying around. It was Barnacle taking a tumble. Got tangled up with Tom Cannon. Over the stick of Packard, he threw his hip to slow down O'Brien's pursuit of the puck, and it's Tim Carroll in his own end. Slides it in front of the hanging bench. They almost kind of get caught with too many men. It wasn't really that close. I think they were aware of the puck's presence. Vaughn snapped a wrister that he really didn't go all that far off because of his shot. His stick was lifted. Only cheating if you get caught. Far corner is Quilty. Back behind the net, Frankie Higgins. Right in front of the boards, in front of the Falmouth locker room. Higgins a backhander. Couldn't connect up ice with Con Cannon. Settled by Blaney. Con Cannon nearly came up with a turnover. Frankie Higgins does just that. Blaney trying to do a little too much there. He's going to simplify his game. You know, he's going crazy with the uh, skating moves and he ends up turning the puck over. Laney takes a tumble. He ran through the attacking end. We have a delayed call coming against Hingham. It's going to be Con Cannon going for a trip, I believe, unless the official is simply putting his arm down. It's a slash. Now that is going to be a slash, but if that's the case, all right. <laughs> the referee was pointing at the wrong end of the ice. He said, wait a second. Well, let's be honest, wouldn't be the first time we saw a referee make a slight mistake. Penalty comes at 740 of the third period. You're really grasping at straws now here if you're Archie. You need a goal on this power play. Get back firmly into this game. Oh, absolutely. They, uh, they have been so close so often, but solving that riddle that is Robbie Kornack is not easy to do. That's Barry, behind the net, lost it to Joe Jacobs. Can't get the clear, O'Connor pinching him from the point. It's bouncing around in the circle. Barry a shot, and he got under it. Looked like a nine iron, wooden. 
Jousts with glass behind the net. He gets taken down by Jacobs. Clean play, delivered a good lead block with his forearm. Solani across the point to O'Connor, a wrister. Can't get the deflection, and Caleb Wooden gets it out of Dodge. Uh, Archbishop Williams just got to get the puck to the net. They're trying so hard to set up the play that's going to work. Sometimes you just got to fling it at the net and hope for a rebound or a bounce. Clark was entangled with Solani. The Bishops now emerge. It's Glass right up the middle, moves out into the circle. Frankie Higgins as well as Tommy Kornack playing the defense. Higgins nearly lost the puck. Getting it back to the top of the zone. That's Barry a shot and a save by Kornack. Rebound to Glass, went off the bottom of the net outside the post. Blaney partially, flan partially fans on a slapper, and that goes nowhere. Here's Frankie Higgins looking to make the Bishops pay, and he does. Frankie Higgins, a shorthanded goal, pretty much ends this game for all intents and purposes. Well, Cam O'Connor had been so rock solid over the last period and a half. Comes out of his crease and tries to uh, keep the power play going with a little bit of a pass there. And uh, Higgins on the forecheck, just really quick to the puck, ends up stealing it away and then finds the space behind O'Connor. Easy wrist shot for the goal that Ices this one for Harvard, uh, for Hingham Hartman. Now five to one, and under six minutes left in regulation. Five goals from five different scores. Hingham's first goal since the first period. Frankie Higgins removing any shadow of a doubt. Unassisted goal as Blaney looks to restart the power play for the Bishops. They only have 15 seconds left. Runs through the corner, and Mike Carroll with a stick lift can't get the full clear. McSweeney, near point looking for Vaughn McSweeney, able to drag around Joe Sullivan, takes a shot, and Sullivan, a back check, may have altered its trajectory. McSweeney to Vaughn, near point, trying to go diagonal to Blaney, stationed down in the corners. We're back to five on five hawk. Vaughn keeps it alive, sends it wide of the post to the far side, and Kornak will fall on top of it as it came back out in front. 5.08 left in period number I tell three. You, playing against Hingham Jake, it's going to be such a frustrating endeavor. They have such active sticks. Every time, hey, uh, every time Archbishop Williams seems like they might be able to get a shot from the uh, perimeter, it all, it, it's just changing direction because they just have the sticks in all the lanes. Kingham's really done a good job with that all game long and really all season long. Higgum is on the verge of its 12th win of the season. For comparison's sake, they made the Super 8 two years ago with 11 wins, and last year, I believe 15 was the number. They're gonna have a lot of points this year because they do have six ties. As we have said, they should be anywhere between that four and six spot, depending on what happens with those a few other games still left, you know, BC High. They uh, make a strong case for the one seed. I don't know how their game goes with Reading tonight. But again, we'll have to see, and we'll discuss that ad nauseum, I'm sure, during the Eagles-Rockets game that's coming up in about half an hour here on My Hockey Live. We still have four and minutes and change to go in regulation in this one. Up ice is Shea. Shea missed on a breakaway earlier. He was denied by Kornak. Shea in the far circle, waiting for some reinforcements. He gets the puck back and sends it to Solani. Solani, across the blue line to Barnacle, got the deflection well wide of the post. Caleb Wooden shoves it back to the opposite corner. Here comes John Sullivan for the Harvardman. Sullivan and Sullivan up that left wing, not a law firm. Dumps it into the corner. Grabbed by Solani. Outlet for Brady. Now this is the time of the game, Jake, where you think about the Archbishop Williams seniors. They're playing, you know, the next shift for all of them could be the last one that they ever have in a high school uniform. You don't know if any of these guys, some of them I'm sure will go on to play some level of hockey, you know be a juniors or maybe uh, you know, D3 somewhere down the line. But for a lot of them, this is the last time in a true competitive setting you know, like this that they're gonna play. Solani an offering from the points. Solani's a junior, but myriad seniors on this roster. We'll, we'll tell them, or tell you who they are as the game progresses. Yeah, I think they know who they are. John Barry, here's one of them. Out of East Bridgewater, a shot. Not deflected wide, Brady follows to the puck. Ryan Brady, he's a senior from Weymouth. Barry turns on the bricks, stapled into the boards by Ryan Riley. 
And we have a... High stick? A high stick is out of the penalty variety or simply an illegal tactic that is going to move the puck out into the neutral zone. I believe it was playing with a high stick and not cheating with a high stick. And we're going to get a goalie change here. Is Robbie Kornax going to exit? Aaron Richardson, the man of the hour right now for the Hardman. He's a junior. Could be the next man up for him. Not this season, of course, barring an injury. But next season, ask Tony Messina the other day, who's the goalie going to be after Robbie Kornack graduates? He said, we'll see. Well, a very brief two and a half minute audition for Aaron Richardson right now, perhaps. You're going to see a lot of unfamiliar faces out there for the Harbin. There's Finley trying to jam one at the far post. And all of a sudden, everyone going gangbusters over there. Looks like cooler heads going to prevail. All right, Jake, let's take a look here at the seniors. So it's Richard Williams, two minutes, 16 seconds left in their season. Huh, so this is going to be the last game for Jack Crowley, forward from Weymouth, Matt Shea and Nick Glass, both senior forwards. Matt Shea's from Braintree, Nick Glass from Weymouth. Ryan O'Connor and Ryan Brady, a couple of seniors. O'Connor, a defenseman from Braintree, and Brady forward from Weymouth. James Rowell, John Barry, Brendan Foley, Brendan O'Brien, Liam Barnacle, Brian Kelly. It's a good list of seniors there for Archbishop Williams. A lot of underclassmen on that uh, roster, though. A lot of young kids. 11 seniors, four juniors, no sophomores, nine freshmen, and one eighth grader. Nine freshmen and one eighth grader. Interesting that... Interesting the future is, as I sound like Yoda, <laughs> for uh, Archbishop Williams. Just waving hello down below to Fred Carbone, goalie coach at Plymouth North. We'll be seeing plenty of him over the next couple of weeks mm -hmm. over at Gallo Arena. John Sullivan a shot. He has a timeshare there, right? <laughs> I think he has a room in the back. That's what I'm told. Eats all of his meals at the Snack Shack. No, there's a secret room over there. A, you know, I'll still, I'm still partial to Fallon because it's the best rink in the state, but Gallo's a close second. I am a big fan of Gallo as well. John Hickey, a good friend of mine. Different style of rinks, of course, and there's really no wrong answer in the discussion. And it doesn't appear as though either Hingham or Archie's will know, experience Gallo one, this year. There's one in particular. There's one in particular in uh, Quincy that I don't think anyone should ever have to go to. Shea Rink, perhaps? I believe it is yeah. Shea. I've never actually been in there. I've seen games listed there. Brady in for the Bishops. Shot and just missing was glass at the near post. That's the kind of day it's been for Archbishop Williams right there. So many near misses. As I was saying, so many of the South sectional tournament games are at Gallo. Ingham's going to be in the Super 8. Archie's been eliminated, so now the team going down there. Here's a bit for Alex Adams. Adams pushed off the play by Solani. He's playing to the whistle. Glass stays with the puck. Nearly jumping the route was Finley successfully in the neutral zone, and Brady got buried just momentarily there by Adams, and Couple of players pushing and shoving as the whistle blows, and really no need whatsoever for any of this for either team. And finally, cooler heads prevail. And I, I don't think anything egregious enough there to warrant a uh, DQ or a suspension. But remember, Higgins got some hockey left, well, and Archie's. What, we what about, about these kids who play spring sports? And that's what we were talking about. You know, be smart. Don't do anything dumb. You know, testosterone is a wonderful thing, but sometimes it can ruin <laughs> your day, so. Well, all right, Rich, that does it. Hingham wins the fifth place game of the 2018 Island Queen Buddy Ferreira Classic. Archbishop Williams with a sixth place finish. Their season comes to an end at five, nine, and six. Hingham is now 12, 
four and six. They await selection Saturday, and you know I've said it all broadcast long. They're going to be in that four, five, or six range. We're just going to have to wait and see. Five goals from five different goal scorers for the Harbormen. As the Archies faithful in particular gives an ovation to their players playing, some of whom playing in their final game for the school. All right, Rich, let's uh, take a little break here, and we'll be back in about 25 minutes for a BC High in Redding in the nightcap. Sounds like a plan, my man. Nice. Well, that is about that. All right. Rich McClone, Kevin Booth on production. I'm Jake Levin. See you in about 20 minutes here on MyHockeyLive.com.